All right, today we're going to be cooking for you guys. Uh, we're going to make some beef sirloin steak tips with peppers and onions, um, and also a macaroni dish that I like to call Daddy Mac. So we're going to go ahead and get started. First things first, I don't use fresh ingredients. I don't use this stuff here. I don't know why anybody gets this. Um, we're going to start off with our garlic cloves. What you want to do is get a couple of good cloves. You want to break off the two or three good size cloves. You want to break off the outside if you can. If not, nah. So you're going to wind up getting the outside off of it anyways, each of these cloves. You don't need much. Right there, we've got three cloves. Keep your cutting board, your cutting area clean. Using your blade. So we've got our garlic cloves with the outsized shell. We've got three of them. You can go ahead and get in here and take a nice close look. We've got three of them. Ooh, all right. I've seen a lot of people holding the blade like this. That is a terrible idea. Don't do that. Hold it, pinch the edge right here. All right, that gives you more control. Curl your fingers and just slide the blade right over it. Look at that. Getting nice thin slices so we can mince that up later. You can even hold two of them at the same time. Mmm, that garlic smells delicious. All right, once we get a good pile, all you gotta do is rock. I can smell it's nice. Mm, it is. It smells delicious. I love the smell of fresh cut garlic. This is a very yummy dish. I've made it a few times and everybody loves it. It's marinated with bourbon, so it's yummy. Now, I'm not gonna take credit for the marinade. It was done by Wegmans. <laughs> All yeah, right. but still good. But it is still really good. Trying times right now, you know? Yeah. Usually I'll make my own sauces and my own marinades, but it is what it is. All right. Now, so I've got my pan. I'm going to take this cut up garlic, throw it right into the pan. All right. Set it down, we got the onions. Not gonna use a whole onion, but the way to cut an onion, most people don't know how to do it. It's actually really simple. You're gonna cut off either end. All right, toss those ends in the trash. We don't want them. You cut them in half. I'm going to take the outside edge, just the last top layer, and peel that right off. You don't want that either. Alright, next, most people think you're going to cut right through all the way. No. You want to actually get down on top, get a good angle on it, and come most of the way through. Leaving like little fingers, almost. Not your own fingers, but fingers of the onion. And you'll see why in a second. Because now it's all held together, right? Now what we do is come down this way and it minces it. It's so much easier than having to hold it all together while you mince. Make sure we don't let anything go to waste. We're gonna take the leftovers and set them away for later. All right, so that's put away. Next, we've got our pepper. 
All right. Now the reason why we don't need to clean the cutting board at this point is because it's all vegetables. All right. Once we go to the meat, we'll have to clean afterwards. But for right now, this is why we do the, pep the peppers, onions, garlic, all the vegetables before. So to clean a pepper, first you cut it in half. All right. We got all these seeds on the inside. Now we're only going to have to use half of this pepper. We're still, still going to clean both sides. First things first, you want to rip, reach in and rip out the top part. Get the majority of the seeds. If you don't get them all, you still, see there's still some inside. Just bang them on there. Bang them out and that's clean. Do the same thing with the other side. Rip them out, bang them. Double check just to make sure there's nothing in there. If there's one or two, it's okay. Next step, clean your cutting board. You don't want any of those seeds. All right. Which side do we want to use? That this one? one? All right. Good. We will use this one. This one will get put away in our handy dandy bag. Mm. All right, so we've got our pepper ready. We're ready to do some cutting. This is easier to do. Um, actually, it's not as easy to do because it moves a little bit. But there's a couple different ways of doing it. I like to first cut it in half. That gives it a flatter surface. And you can julienne them. Basically long, thin slices, almost like french fries. All right, make sure you're curling your fingers. We don't want our tips of fingers in. The mail? <laughs> well, absolutely not. <laughs> we already have our meat. It's right there. Are you going to julienne them? Uh, Alright, next, we're going to cut them. I'm going to stack them up side by side. I'm going to cut them this way. Quarters. Not necessarily quarters, but... Smaller. Smaller pieces. All right, then we take our pan, just like before, and whoop, right in. And a half pepper, half an onion, some garlic. All right, now the fun part, the meat. I'm gonna wash our hands real quick so I can grasp the knife. Make sure you wash your hands. Sanitation is very important when cooking. Yeah, no cross-contamination on here. Yep. Thank you. Uh huh. Look at that meat. Mm. Now my hand is gonna get dirty again, anyways. But always wash. But I'm gonna wind up washing. Make sure that my left hand, the hand is gonna stay dirty. This hand is gonna stay clean. If by dirty I mean touching the meat. All right. So I'm gonna cut them first into thirds, because this is a good sized chunk of meat. Set off to the side. The sound that it makes. Oh, I love the sound of cutting meat. This one I'm going to cut into a smaller piece. We follow the same principles as when we're cutting vegetables. We want to curl our fingers so we don't chop off fingertips. Because at some point, most chefs have cut off their fingertips. Or cut themselves, at least. Mm -hmm. Or burnt themselves, or done something to injure themselves. Alright, we're not going to take all of them. We're going to take... Just like four, we're gonna come down this way. Cube shapes. Yep, good size cubes, about bite size. This, and did you tell them how much this is feeding? Family of five. five. Yeah, this will feed five. <laughs> all right, look at that, guys. All right, it's all cut up. It's all cut up. Next, we're going to put it into the pan. The yummy pan of goodness. Flavor town right there. Not done yet. All right. Now, we're going to leave that here for now. All right. So, we're going to put this. First, we're going to knock these off the top. Put this on the front burner. Because that is where we want it to be. We're gonna set that on high real quick. We're gonna put a little bit of, just a little bit, a little bit of black pepper. Too easy. 
You know what? Let's do this right. Some salt. Just a dash. Some garlic powder. And some olive oil. Next, we are going to cover that up and let it cook. Turn the handle in so we don't want accidents. All right, now that we've got that simmering in the pan, what do we do while we're waiting? We clean up. Clean up as you go. Yeah. All right, we gotta stir this up a little bit. Make sure we get all the goodness of the vegetables in there. Gotta love this sound. Gotta love that sound. Oh, that smell is delicious. Smell aroma. Yeah, unfortunately, you guys can't smell this, but I'm using a wooden uh, spatula type thing. It's not necessarily a spatula, but it is a spatula. All right, we're gonna cover it up again. Seal in those juices there. All right, next. We're going to get started on our Daddy Mac first. All right. We've got our, we got to get this going. The back burner. Set that on high and cover it. We'll let that come to a boil. <sighs> we wait. All right. Ooh, look at that. The juices are coming out real nicely. Oh, didn't even need to add any liquid. It's starting to seal in. So what we're going to do at this point, I'm going to turn down the heat and just let it simmer. Turn it down real low. All right. We can stir it up. Like that. Stir it up real good. We like our meat kind of medium. Absolutely. I don't like it tough, so. <laughs> Let that simmer and we wait. All right, while we were away, I was cleaning and uh, like you should always do. And prepping for the next steps. All right, this is pretty much done. We want to give it a taste real quick. Make sure the meat is fully cooked. We can either cut into it, which that feels like it's done, or we can pull it out and try a piece. That is done. Remove it from the heat. Why don't you put the cover back on it, Daddy? Let it cool off. Because what happens if you put the cover back on it, Daddy? It continues to cook. Mm -hmm. Why are you quizzing me? <laughs> oh, that's so good. Mm. All right, so the next steps we're going to do while we're waiting for our water to boil is we're going to prep for the Daddy Mac. First thing I want to do is wet some uh, paper towels real quick because after we washed the uh, the cutting board. My wife decided she wanted to come through and wash it again because I was having fun with it and you guys were might get the idea that that was how I actually washed things. I'm going to put that wet paper towel down. Put the cutting board on top of it. I didn't show you guys this last time, but guess what? Now this doesn't slide. That's how you prevent it from sliding. You can also use a regular towel, but I like paper towel because they're disposable. For our Daddy Mac, we've got mozzarella cheese. We've got butter. Parmesan cheese, some mild cheddar cheese, some penny pasta. Still waiting for our water to boil. I want to separate these out. This is a good use of these uh, these cheese sticks that you can get at the supermarket. We get so much. Single serve. We have so many of them. We buy so many. Our kids go through so many. Oh. Uh, We've peeled our wrappers off of the mozzarella and we can take two or three at a time and just cut them up into little 
semi bite sized pieces because we're going to want them to melt. The kids love the Daddy Mac. And this is named after me, of course, because I am the Daddy. Well, at least their Daddy. Yeah, their Daddy. <laughs> Not any of your daddies, all right? <laughs> My daddy. <laughs> awesome. All right, now we've got our water to a nice rolling boil. This is what a rolling boil looks like. We're going to take our pasta. We're going to go with a pound and a half. Get as close as you can without actually sticking your hand in the water. And I'll do about half of this. Okay. Okay. All right, close that up to the side. This is going to start boiling. Um, so we want to stir this up real quickly. So it doesn't get stuck together. So it doesn't get stuck together at all. You can also take some of that uh, oil and put it in there, but right now um, there's no need to. And I'll show you another trick when this starts boiling over again. Go. All right, now at some point you're going to start doing this. It's going to start bubbling and boiling over. And if you keep the lid off of it long enough, it's going to do it again. Now the way to prevent this from happening is add a little bit of salt. Add a little bit of salt to that water. It's not going to affect the flavor of the pasta, but what it does is it changes the chemical composition uh, of the water to salt water, which has a higher boiling point than regular tap water. We're going to go ahead and cover this back up. All right, so let's go ahead and take the lid off. After we've stirred this several times, take the lid off, check to see if it's done. Take one piece, test our food. All right, I have some. I'm gonna shut that down. You want to make sure that it stays hot. And bring it over and strain it. Now always strain away from you so the steam doesn't burn you. All right. I'm going to put this in our other sink. Take this. We don't want to pull it off. Throw it right in there. We're going to take our cheese that we cut up. Dump it right on in there. We're going to take this out of the sink and over to our cooking area where we are going to put in some butter, figure about a stick, or three quarters of a stick of butter. For a pound and a half. All right, then we're gonna take some shredded cheese, not very much okay. left in here, throw it in. And take some Parmesan cheese, Big, big chunk of Parmesan and a little bit of ranch. Not much, just a little bit. Okay, we're going to put our lid back on this. This is where it gets messy and fun. This is where it gets messy and fun. We're going to take it, hold on to the lid, hold on to the handle, and shake. I want the heat inside it. This is my first time I've ever seen this. I want the heat inside there to melt all the cheese. And this will stir it up very evenly. Let's see what we got so far. Oh yeah. That's looking good. Perfect. Now, let's give this a stir. Look at how nice and melty that cheese is. Oh, look at that. Is the fire gone too? Now, as it cools off, you're going to get these spider webs, which is okay. It's all delicious. Now, next thing we got to do is we got to plate it. I want to plate these, but well, we got the spider webs. This is how you know it's good. Get some of these spider webs. Coming in. Just 
a little bit right there. Oh, that looks so good, Daddy. All right, now we're gonna come over and get some of our meat. Give me that. Make sure we got some peppers and onions in there too. Yeah, Mama loves those. Uh huh. And a couple more meat. A couple more pieces of meat. Uh huh. That's good. And we have ourselves some barbecue beef with peppers and onions and Daddy Mac. Thank you, Daddy. This has been another session of, well, our first session of cooking in pajamas. <laughs>